Okay, today I want to talk about uh, dwell mechanisms. Um, we can create a dwell um, where uh, basically we have a linkage that has continuous rotation of the crank, um, but the output pauses. Now these are an approximate dwell that we'll be discussing. Um, the dwell is not perfect. Um, in other words, there's not a complete um, zero velocity on the output. There's a little bit of wiggle, if you will, of the output as the input continues to move, but it's an approximate dwell and, and is useful for many applications. Um, here is a result of such a mechanism. Um, this is the end of the design process for this particular mechanism. And what you're going to see here is a situation where the input, the crank here, is going to continue to rotate. And as that crank rotates, um, you will see uh, it come around here to about 45 degrees, or I guess negative 45 degrees if this is the uh, origin and this is the x-axis. It'd be down here at about negative 45. But from about negative 45 to about positive 45, so about a 90 degree swing of the crank, there will be no motion of this output rocker. Um, and again, this is the end of the design process. Um, and I'm going to show you how to go about uh, designing this uh, mechanism. But this is about a 22 degree, 22 and a half degree swing here. So the total output swing of this rocker is about 45 degrees for a 90 degree motion. Okay, so for a 90 degree motion of the crank, um, this rocker is going to be paused in this position. Then, when the crank gets back to about 45 degrees and goes back around, then this rocker will move. So it'll move down to here and then go back up. So the complete swing of this rocker will be about 45 degrees. But at this location here, where it's about 22 and a half degrees up from this line, it's going to pause here. It will be paused here while the crank moves from negative 45 to 45 degrees. So let's just watch that. Okay, so here we see the rockers moving, comes down, moves here, and that's going to start going back up. And right about here, the rocker is paused. It's not going to move until about 45 degrees for the crank, and then it's moving again. And you can see it's paused from about the time the coupler point is in this location to the time the coupler point's in that location. I want to talk about is how to go about creating this design. Now in the textbook they show um, this figure as an example of creating such a, a single dwell. They first start with this um, linkage. This linkage is one in which the coupler curve has a arc in it. This arc is very important for because the dwell happens at the center of a circle that comes in contact with that arc. So in other words, um, the center of that arc is about here, and that's where the dwell happens. Um, here's kind of the finished image. The change that has occurred between this figure and this figure, or the addition to the linkage, is a link 5 that you see here. This link 5 comes down and is connected to another link, which is connected to ground. That's similar to what we have. Now, if you notice, um, since this is the center point of this arc, as the coupler point moves from here to about here, this center point does not move. That's the dwell location. So even though the link will be pivoting here um, and the coupler point moving along this path, this point doesn't move. So that's a dwell. But then once you leave, probably about here to come back around as the crank continues, as this crank continues to rotate, um, this guy will be pushed down to here and so this is the rocker motion and you notice here it's about 90 degrees on the one I showed you um, here that motion that rocker motion is only about 45 degrees from here to here as it moves down the one they created here is 90 degrees so it's a little bit larger so how do we go about creating that well the first thing that we need to do is we need to come up with a linkage that creates a coupler curve that has a um, arc in it, a, a circular portion. And so we turn to our text, to our figure. Uh, this is one of the tables in the text with a lot of coupler curves that we can choose from. Again, we're focusing, we're going to be focusing on class, class one, couple of these curves, um, 
crank rocker to start off with and you see many of these curves have arcs if you look you'll see kind of arcs in a lot of them and so the question becomes oh, which one do you want to use and really you can use many of them um, lots of different ones I, I believe for this particular um, example I used the 216 um, 2 I believe I used a 216 2 um, let me see 2 I think I used this one in the one that I'm showing you guys um, if you see it here it looks actually looks a little bit more like this oh, that's right I used a 2.5 so this is the one I used 216 was our gamma 2.5 and as you notice here there's there's definitely an arc coming around here a circular portion okay so that's where you start and the first thing you need to do is create that linkage and have it move so um, if you're doing it on paper you want to draw that linkage out and draw it in many different um, positions for the crank so you do get basically this shape um, I've done that in this application again this is force effect motion that I'm using let me just move back to where that linkage was first created I believe it's here and just to wait a minute that's a lot of extra pieces um, here okay so this is just the basic linkage again you would be doing this on paper and if you draw it for many different orientations of this crank you can kind of plot out you know 10 to 12 points along this curve will be enough for you to kind of get a feel for what it looks like and there as you see the curve and so great and so now we need to go about um, creating the dwell from this linkage and the way that we do that is usually we will have a requirement and that requirement is on how much of the cranks motion does the dwell need to happen for and you may recall when I showed the first image where the dwell was a part of the linkage it was about 90 uh, degrees so the crank moved from let me just grab it from about here to about here about 90 degrees of crank motion that's where we want our dwell to happen and so what we're focused on then is finding a arc that lines up for that entire motion again from negative 45 down whoops excuse me from negative 45 down to about 45 up so you see that takes care of about the vast majority of the curve over on that side and it's going to be different for every coupler curve but from about here to about here that's the region at which I want to be in dwell so the question becomes um, what's the center of the arc that is going to touch here in the middle here and over at the end there one of the easiest ways to fi figure that out is to use a symmetric coupler curve because for a symmetric coupler curve if you put the link uh, collinear extended or in this case collinear overlapped the um, um, some symmetry line for this coupler curve is going to be from point P down to B that's our line of symmetry right there and so somewhere along that line is going to be the center of the curve that we just talked about and so for me the way I found that um, is normally I will draw the linkage in three positions that are of my concern so one position will be the position where um, the coupler point is perfectly on the symmetry line and that's going to be either here or you can carry it around to this side collinear extended so in this position here's my symmetry line so I will draw the linkage there or I should say draw the linkage right here where that coupler point is on the symmetry line that I'm concerned about and I will also draw the linkage in this position 45 degrees down and in this position 45 degrees up now of course that is depending upon that's dependent upon your application because for your particular application you may want a uh, dwell for 30 degrees in which case you'd be concerned about a 15 degree difference it just depends right and so for this particular case we're doing 90 so we're doing 45 down and 45 up now if you notice there's also kind of an arc on this back side um, if I did if I use that side and in which case I'd be going 45 here 0 and 45 up then my dwell would be happening kind of up in this region like way up here I want my dwell to be happening in here for this particular example so I'm not using this side I'm using the side back over here right so I'm using this side of my linkage 
And so my next thing, and, and since I'm not working on paper, I can't really draw the, the um, linkage in those two orientations. So I did it here in this Force Effect Motion app. I'm just going to go and find it for you guys. Um, so here is where I got started. And so just look here. And what you'll notice is I have here uh, my primary linkage, which is, oops, it's kind of getting, it's, it's kind of snapping to a point that I do not want. So let's kind of come around. Okay. Okay. So hope that's right. I feel like that's not correct. There's something wrong. Okay. Let's see if I can drag it around just so I want to put it basically right there. Okay, that's okay. So if you notice here, um, here is my crank and my original linkage. And here is another crank 45 degrees displaced from this one and another one 45 degrees down. So I'm going to go ahead and use that crank and that crank to create two more linkages um, so I can see where all the points are on my uh, coupler curve. Okay. And so that would be this picture here. And so in this image, I have three different linkages where each of the cranks is displaced by 45 degrees. And let's watch that uh, turn. So it's kind of cool to watch. And so here they're all moving. Again, three linkages, so three different coupler points. Here's the middle one, the one 45, other one 45 degrees down, so it's lagging. And you can just kind of see how they move and you see how the velocities are different. And I'm going to try to stop it right where this um, point C is, right on the ground link. Okay, so right about there. And so if you notice, for 90 degrees of crank motion, 45 down, 0, 45 up, we have this arc. And for this arc, that's our line of symmetry. So I've kind of put in another link here where that's the line of symmetry all the way up. So this FG line is my, that line of symmetry. The next thing to do would be to find that center point. And in this particular figure, I found it. The center point for this arc from here to here is about here. That's the center point. So if you notice, and I didn't focus on that the previous time when I was running this, but as these links move around, you'll notice that this point H, while it slides back and forth, it kind of pauses here as we go from this point all the way over to this point. And so this time, let's pay attention and watch that. Okay, so you see our point H here is moving down. It's not going to go any lower than about there. Again, it's attached simply to my center point P, the, the original one. 45 degrees up, that's the one that's 45 degrees down. So during this time period, right, as the center, the main coupler point, was moving from this point to this point, point H is not moving. Now it starts to move. Okay, so when that, cent when that point P gets to about here, H is going to be at its highest point and it's not going to move anymore, you'll see right about there. So H is steady. It's going to continue to be steady until it gets to here. Now it's going back down. And so we've accomplished the first part of that design. Now what we could do is get rid of all these extra points. These extra points again were useful and would still be also useful on your paper. So if you were doing this on paper, you have your one, two, three points that you've drawn on your paper by drawing the linkage three times. And now you can use, for example, a compass. And so what you do is you take a compass and you know your center point is going to be somewhere on this symmetry line. You put your compass there, and let's say you didn't know where it was, so maybe you assume it's here. And you put the other end on one of your points, on one of your coupler points, and then you see, does that trace out your curve? And let's just see. So if I did it here, you see how it's left the, oops, I'm sorry, how it's left the curve? So it's not a good center point location. If I was way up here on the symmetry line, and I place it on one of the coupler points, let's say I place it here, so you can see that there it leaves the center line quite early right because it's a very small radius but once you get it about right and again you wouldn't know where this point H was this is a trial and error and you put it on your line of symmetry here Let's see line of symmetry at that point H, you'll see that it pretty much stays on that curve all the way through 
to the three points that you have as your your concern. And so that's your dwell point. And that's how you would find your dwell. Okay. And so now what we need to do is we need to create this rocker motion. That rocker motion uh, design was 45 degrees. We would like the rocker to move through 45 degrees. And so what we have here is a slider. And so to get that rocker drawn in, the thought would be, let me bring up uh, one of the extra sheets here that I have ready. So this is what we're dealing with at this point. We have our slider motion. Um, we know where the dwell point is and we know where the lowest point is, what they call the maximum stroke. And so we have this much distance of motion. You remember on our design, we moved from H here down to about this location. So we had that much. What we want to do is we want to come off perpendicular to that right in the center of that maximum stroke point. We want to come over and want to create a ground point somewhere out here such that the angle is one half of our desired angle. And we have a 45 degree desired angle, so we come off here so that there's a 22 degree angle. And I've done that um, in our application. And so once you do that, um, if you notice here, you end up with 90 degrees because they came off at a 45 degree angle here. And so I'm going to show you uh, that image. Um, this is the very beginning of that. And we'll just look at that. I've deleted all the extra uh, links and kind of kind of see how it goes before we do that. So that's your high point, your dwell point. This is your maximum stroke point there. And so from here to here, you're going to come over and you're going to create that ground position. And so I'm going to show that done um, um, here. What else is that here was that dwell point. I needed to come over and create ground somewhere perpendicular. So I came over, I created the ground point, and at first when I did this, my point was too far in, and so my angle was too large. It was bigger than 22. So I kind of moved out further, and now my angle is almost exactly, let's see what we have here. So my angle is 22.79, so very close to 22.5. And we'll go ahead and watch that motion. And so again, we're dwelled there. That's our dwell point. Then we come down here for our maximum stroke, a little bit below B. And again, 22.5 on both sides of 22.7. And we're coming back up. And so, and that's the conclusion. So then we've created a, a single dwell, approximate dwell um, mechanism here where it dwells uh, for 90 degrees of crank motion and gives us a 45 degree uh, rocker output. Thanks for watching.